I don't care what y'all do. Y'all try it the way you want to. I don't like to see him. And he's got plenty of money. He doesn't mind spending attorney fees. Your client's got plenty of money, and they don't mind spending attorney fees. So make the Bar Association wealthier. <laughs> well, still, uh, Your Honor. And I'll decide, my, I'll do my job deciding whether or not they have to answer these interrogatories. That would or, be an issue later down the line. If it did sell, the money goes to the court, then we. Well, greetings, and thank you for being up with us for this special edition of News Humor. I was putting my son to bed this evening, and I saw a, a clip come up of the news. It was talking about how the Attorney General of Texas was demanding the release of the hairstylist who owned the salon, and then doing further research, I also saw that the lieutenant governor had also demanded her release and said that he would serve house arrest for her in her stead. And, and these are all very commendable actions. But it brings me to the story that I believe is not being told. And, and before, I, before I go into that story, I'm going to first talk about some of the things that the lieutenant governor said and did. Let's let's take a take a watch. The Dallas salon owner who was jailed for reopening her business despite coronavirus restrictions. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has modified his orders to eliminate confinement as punishment, effectively freeing Shelley Luther. State Attorney General Ken Paxson tweeted this: the Supreme Court of Texas has ordered Shelley Luther to be released from Dallas County Jail, exclamation point. Before today's news, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick had tweeted this, I'm covering the $7,000 fine she had to pay, and I volunteer to be placed under house arrest so she can go to work and feed her kids. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick is with me now. Great to see you today. Um, they're gonna fight for it. And so first of all, this was a story of her fight, and she's been on the front line fighting uh, for a while on this, protecting her 18 employees who work for her. Secondly, so that's the big story, she's fighting. The next story is this vengeful judge sending her to jail for seven days in Dallas County while Dallas County has been basically turning uh, criminals out left and right. I mean, their DA has a standing order. If you steal anything less than $750, we won't even arrest you. So you take those two stories together, and that's caught the imagination of the American public. And the American public sees this nationally. And we see it, quite frankly, in a lot of Democrat states, Democrat counties, Democrat cities, where they're putting people in jail. This was not Governor Abbott putting her in jail. This was not me putting her in jail or Attorney General Ken Paxton. This was a local decision, and this judge, he could have fined her $50. She broke the governor's executive order fine. He could have fined her some minimal amount and let her go back mm -hmm, to work and take mm -hmm. care of her employees and her kids. I said mm -hmm, that neither the governor mm -hmm. nor myself, we don't want to send anyone to jail. The governor had originally uh, issued executive orders, and we asked for people to follow them. We trust people to follow them. And there were some uh, penalties if you didn't follow those, but we didn't want to put anyone in jail. This is left to local decisions. So now he's rescinded that order so that no one can be sent to jail. Mm -hmm. No, we do want people to follow the orders. And as the attorney general said earlier today on Fox, yeah, there could have been a penalty. There could have been a small fine, $100 or $50. Um, but now mm -hmm. is not the time when people are so stressed, so stressed. Harris, I'm a small business owner. When you lose everything you've invested in a business and your life dreams, you may make some decisions that you wouldn't normally make. So she broke mm. the, the governor's order, but it didn't deserve this type of retribution from the judge. And remember, the main reason he put her in jail is he demanded she apologize to him. Apologize yeah. to him. You know, there's something about being a judge. And my son was a longtime criminal judge and now a U.S. attorney. My son was a tough judge, uh, Harris, but he also knew when it was time for mercy and and uh, an understanding of a of a particular case, yeah. and this lady well, during a made a mistake, that but she didn't deserve this. Right. Some thirty three, thirty four million people out of work. Um, okay, that was interesting. So let's just go over some of the highlights. Dan Patrick, the lieutenant governor of Texas, said that he would offer to pay the fines and serve the house arrest for her. Like I said, that's very commendable. 
He also denies that the executive branch put her in jail, saying that it wasn't his decision, it wasn't the governor's decision, and it wasn't the attorney general's decision. And they also talk about the governor modifying the order so that nobody can go to jail over the, the COVID shelter in place. Here, here's the problems that I have with that. <clears throat> okay, you can say it wasn't your fault all you want. You can say it was the judge. The judge was going rogue. And, you know, I get and I understand why you guys can't pardon her for a contempt of court because, well, the judge is the one charging her with contempt of court. But um, here's the thing, is that Governor Abbott, you gave the judge the power to throw her in jail. You gave, her, you gave the judge that power. And we know you gave the power because you amended the order to take away that power. So if you amended the order to take away the power, it means that you gave the judge the power in the first place. Now, as far as the Lieutenant Governor, um, he's not really in the whole mix as being directly involved because he's just the lieutenant governor. It's kind of like being the vice president. The president always gets the blame. So he's kind of getting off the hook and he's, he's saving his little tell, but he's going on national TV. And this is one of the problems is that you don't have rights. She would not have the rights. She would still be sitting in jail right now had the news not gotten a hold of this and had the American public not been so upset, and especially the people in Texas. See, that's the only thing that gives her the privileges that she has because she doesn't have rights. She has privileges, and all of us in America do. None of us in America have rights. We all get taught that we have rights, but we really have privileges, and this situation proves that. 100% without a shadow of a doubt. Now let's go ahead and see what the Attorney General says in this other interview that we have. And joining me now is the aforementioned Texas Attorney General, Ken Paxton. Uh, Ken, it's great to see you. You want this salon owner out of jail, but how are you gonna make that happen? You know, it's a complicated question. We're operating under a different regime than we've ever operated under before. And that judge, held, she was held in contempt. So the governor can't actually pardon that. And so it's really public pressure. And because an appeal, we can't get an appeal done in, in time because she's only gonna be there seven days, but she ought to be released immediately. We're hoping that public pressure and shows like this can, can highlight the injustice that's happening to this mother. Laura, you couldn't have said this any better. I had my own business and you have rent payments. You have all kinds of expenses that you're incurring while you're not making any money. And this is a woman that has expenses. She has children and here she is. She can't operate and all she's done. She hasn't, she hasn't sold drugs. She hasn't hurt anybody. She hasn't killed anybody. And yet they're releasing prisoners in Dallas and they're putting her in jail. Now in Dallas County where she was sentenced, They've released about 1,000 inmates. Harris County has let over 370 walk free. And one of those inmates was arrested on charges of possessing other people's IDs, so ID fraud and breaking into a car. And then another prisoner set free in Harris County is now charged with beating his ex-girlfriend and throwing her grandmother to the ground. So how is it that these people are being set free while people who just want to put food on the table, run their businesses responsibly, are being locked up? It's crazy. Well, it's it's, I can't believe this is America sometimes, and I can't believe this is Texas. No, I mean, I, it feels more like China than America, and let alone happening in Texas. This is exactly what you said. We've got, we've got Rahm Emanuel's statement from the Clinton administration, don't let a good crisis go to waste. That's certainly happening here, where they're releasing potentially thousands of convicted felons because they're worried about them getting this virus, and for some reason, they're not worried about her. A woman that's just trying to do her job? It makes no sense at all. We've literally tried to do our best at balancing public health and saving lives, but allowing people some semblance of their lives, allowing yeah. them to make a living. How is that wrong? I, I just, I literally don't Attorney, get it. Attorney General Paxson, we're going to be following this closely. Thank you for what you're trying to do and Thank give you. voice to this at the very least. Okay, the Attorney General 
denies any of his involvement and says that this feels more like China than America. And with that statement, I would have to agree. Now, let me explain something from my child's second grade social studies book. Branches of government, legislative, executive, and judicial. Now the legislative branch really is not in this, okay? Because it was the governor who made an executive order. The executive branch carries out the laws. The executive branch has the power to veto the legislature if the legislature gets out of line. And this is all about the checks and balances of government. The executive branch also works with the cabinet. And that is important because the attorney general is a part of that cabinet. And the attorney general's job is to prosecute, is to prosecute actions. Now, an officer made the arrest and the officer works under the executive branch of government. Remember, the executive branch carries out the law. So the officer was just acting in the best faith of carrying out the law when he made the arrest because it's not a cop's job to know the law. That's the prosecutor's job. And the prosecutor or the solicitor or whatever it's called in Texas works directly under the attorney general. They come under the jurisdiction of the attorney general because the attorney general is the general attorney for the state for prosecuting crimes. And they also go after consumer fraud. The prosecutor who works under the executive branch with the attorney general they go to the judicial branch. They take their cause of action to the judicial branch of government. If the governor wouldn't have put in the order that people could be arrested for violating the stay-at-home order, she would have never gone to jail. If the prosecutor's office thought that she shouldn't get arrested and shouldn't serve time in jail for the stay-at-home order, if they believed that the stay-at-home order was wrong or didn't merit any type of crime, didn't merit any type of punishment, then again, they could have just let it go. They could have just let it go. They did not have to pursue that to the judicial branch of government. Okay. Now, the judicial branch of government is the branch of government is made up of the courts. Judges in the courts make sure that the laws are fair. They make sure that the laws are fair. And Here's another thing they do. The Supreme Court justices make sure the laws passed by Congress follow the United States Constitution. Now, that's not just something that the Supreme Court's supposed to do. Okay, that's something that the trial court's supposed to do. It's something the appellant court's supposed to do. And if there's still a question, then the Supreme Court defines the rights as written in the Constitution. But Every court is supposed to uphold rights. Again, we do not have rights. We have privileges. You got three branches of government. And the whole idea is to spread the power of the government out among these three branches. Now, again, the executive branch. If the executive branch gets out of line and they just start arresting people for no reason, you know, like, because they left their house and went to go cut somebody's hair, then it's the judicial branch's job to put a check and a balance on the executive branch and say, whoa, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that because that goes against the laws of the state. And that's not what happened here. The main point I'm getting at is why is the attorney general going around saying that it wasn't his fault, he didn't want any of this to happen, when his office knew very well what the executive order was, and they knew very well that the judge could impose that sentence. If they thought that the sentence was wrong, then they shouldn't prosecute anything where anybody gets persecuted with a stay-at-home order. Because that's what it is, it's a persecution. I believe I have the right to be free. You believe you have the right to be safe. You believe that your right to be safe trumps my freedom. You have a conflict of rights. And who knows what the actual solution is. That's for us as a society 
to decide. That's for us as a society to decide. Now, here's one of the most interesting things, I think, about where they're talking about the three branches of government in this book for a second grade. This means that each branch can check the actions of another. This helps make sure that the three branches share the power to rule. The power to rule. You see, because they even tell our second graders that they are rulers over us, that they lord over us, that we are the servants to the servant we created called government. And then when they get caught doing what they do, because that's what government does, they deny it. And they go on a PR campaign and say, oh, well, we, we just put in the order to scare people that they could go to jail. We didn't really want any judge to actually carry that out. Oh, no, because we care about you. We want what's best for you. That's why we ordered y'all all to stay home and 33 million people are out of work today. That's what rulers do, not leaders. Leaders come up with solutions. Leaders solve problems. Leaders can take the blame when they mess up because they're humble. That's what leaders do. Now, <clears throat> just think about this. Just think about this because we're at a very, very strange time in American history. And I'm so proud of Shelley. I'm so proud of Shelley Luther for standing up because she is fighting for your rights. She's standing up for her rights and she's fighting for yours. And in the last video, I asked what would happen if 50 people showed up to the courthouse? What would happen if 100 people showed up to the courthouse? What kind of law? Could we make sure gets executed at that point? And that's a good question. And when you're thinking about that, when you're going over that in your mind, just think to yourself, if it's not your turn right now, if this isn't your moment in time that the government is coming and taking away your rights, throwing you in jail because you left your house, throwing you in jail because you want to feed your children, throwing you in jail for whatever other reason they might come up with, maybe possessing a plant, If it's not your number this time, it'll be your number eventually. We need more people to stand for each other's rights. We can't just have the Shelley Luthers of the world going and fighting for everyone else's rights because they're gonna lose. Shelley Luther would have lost if she were alone on this. Anyways, that's all I got for right now. Sorry it wasn't better. I just felt the need to, to get this out quick.